The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Chapter 7. I awoke to a living nightmare. I was lying on the ground, and my whole body ached. I reached up and felt a bump on my head. When I heard voices, I sat up and looked around. What I saw was amazing and horrible. I was in a huge cave-like chamber. The stone walls were wet and dripping with water. There were many openings in the walls. Some were tunnels that led into blackness. Others were small, shallow indentations with people crowded in them. Fires burned in this huge room. Smoke hung in the air. I could smell food cooking. Dirty children ran past me. There were hundreds of people here. All were filthy and wore ragged clothes. More people entered through the tunnels. Most looked crippled and had canes and crutches. Lame men limped. Others crawled along the floor, their backs bent. Blind men felt their way along. They carried cups jingling with coins. Everyone here was a beggar or a thief. It was an entire city of them. In this strange place, deep in the sewers under the city of Paris, the unwanted came at night to live. I was in the city of beggars. I had heard stories of such a place. Now I was seeing it with my own eyes. As the cripples entered the great room, they threw aside their crutches. Men who crawled with twisted backs stood up and walked. The blind opened their eyes and could see. It is a miracle, I said, astonished. Then I realized they only pretended to be crippled and blind. You are in the court of miracles, boomed a voice behind me. Hear the blind see, the crippled walk. Thieves are kings, and beggars are gentlemen. I turned to see a fat man in ragged clothes, sitting on a huge stone. He held a cup of wine and chewed on a chicken leg. On each side of him stood a strong guard. Each had a sword tucked into his belt. When you are in the king's court, you should bow, stated the fat man. I have already seen one king today, I answered bravely. He was the king of fools, and I did not bow to him. No, but you will bow to me, for I and my people carry the king of fools on our backs. The king of beggars held out his cup. A young girl ran up and filled it. All the beggars were watching me now. I heard someone laugh. What do we do with people who come to our city uninvited? the king asked his people. Hang them, the people cried as one. Just as those above hang us when we come out to beg and steal, the king continued. They don't like us on their streets, and we don't like them coming down here. The king looked right at me as he ordered his subjects to hang me. I could not believe it. First I had been beaten up by the king of fools. Now I was to be hung by the king of beggars. Well, I thought to myself, I am a poet and a writer, a man of words. Perhaps I should plead for mercy. Your Majesty, I said to the king, I am but a poor beggar myself. I write plays, but I never get paid for them. I, too, am an outcast. The people of Paris don't like me either. The king gazed at me with new interest. I kept talking. I want to join you. I want to live here in the court of miracles. Oh, so you want to join us, the king asked me with a strange gleam in his eyes. Yes, yes, I answered eagerly. Hmm, you must pass a test, the king warned. Anything, I replied. Very well, then, said the king with a laugh. A group of beggars ran up to me. One placed a small stool at my feet. A rope was lowered from the roof. On that rope hung a stuffed rag doll the size of a man. The doll was covered with hundreds of tiny bells, which jingled as it was lowered. A beggar took my hand and led me to the stool. Step up, he ordered me. I got on the wooden stool, which was very wobbly. What do I do now, I asked. That is very simple, said the fat king of beggars. You must reach into the dummy's pocket and pull out the coins that you find there. You must do that without making the bells ring. If even one bell rings, then you will take the dummy's place on the end of that rope. I swallowed hard in fear. I understand, I said, and turned toward the stuffed man. Please, I said to the dummy, just keep quiet. My poor life is in your hands. With that, I reached up. One more thing, the king said to me. You must stand on the stool with one foot. The king and all the beggars laughed. Uh, but, but that is impossible, I cried. If you do not want to try, then we will hang you now, the king said with menace. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I will try, I stammered. 
Then good luck, Ryder, the king said. I swallowed in fear once more, then I lifted one foot and balanced on the other. The stool wobbled. I almost fell. I steadied myself and reached out again. With a loud snap, one of the legs on the stool broke. I fell headlong into the stuffed man. Down I went. I landed on my rump in the dirt. The bells on the stuffed man jingled loudly. To me they sounded louder than the bells of Notre Dame. These bells were ringing up my death. The beggars all laughed. Their king laughed the loudest of all. Then he sighed. He turned to the two men at his side. Hang him, the king said, and pointed straight at me.